Well, hi, everybody. It's David George Brook, that gratitude guy, with another special guest on the Gratitude Podcast interview today. And today I have uh, somebody I've always been very impressed with, uh, with Operation Military Family and a number of other things he's doing with something new called Vision 2020. Met him a number of years ago and just a fine young man because he's a lot younger than I am, Mr. Mike Schindler. Mike, welcome to the podcast. Hey, that, thanks for having me, David. I'm grateful to be here. I, I, I'm truly grateful to be here, to be honest. Yeah. True. Very, very true. So as I mentioned, what we're trying to do or what I'm trying to do here is really help people out that may not have the same thought process or whatever. So, but let me at least first start with this question. What have you found has been your best coping mechanism to deal with this pandemic? Yeah, for me, uh, to cope with it, and that's a great way to phrase it too, you know, what are the coping skills, you know, that I've deployed in my own life for this? I was sharing with a friend of mine, I said, you know, this is a lot like a deployment uh, for me, you know, and we would go out to sea and you would have nothing, right? You're contained in a box on a ship and you're out to sea and there's nowhere to go. So uh, for me, I've been committed to my own personal growth and there's an opportunity, I think, for people to just be committed to growth and you either get consumed by all the external you know, talking heads, et cetera, like that, or you figure out a way, how can I grow through this? And that's what I did is I just went, I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to commit to growth. Nice. Yeah. Nice. That's really, really good. And did you notice, you mentioned earlier about being grateful and that's kind of my middle name is that gratitude guy. Has your, what would you say right now you're most grateful for? Has it changed since this has all happened four or five weeks ago? Has it been the same? What's the most, the most current thing you're most grateful for in your life? I think it's more family time uh, for me, uh, time with my daughters, uh, mm -hmm. to be honest with you. Um, you know, I've, I've had the, the privilege of working out of my home for a number of years. So for me, there the wasn't a huge change. But the, the big change was the fact that my daughters are home and we were able to walk. You mm -hmm. know, we're able to do more walks and more talks and I'm able to invest in them. And, and you know, there's pros and cons to that for sure. But uh, I would say that, you know, for me, it is, it is truly the time with my daughters. Yeah, that's, we found that uh, I've noticed in doing these and just in general, there's a lot of silver linings to this whole thing that we don't think about because it's negative news and it's 24 seven and people dying. And yeah. It's obviously very tragic and life changing, certainly probably the biggest event that will happen to any of us in our lifetime. But the family dinner I've heard is making a comeback and the walks and the, the time you mentioned with your wife and your daughters and so forth. So it's, it's, that's really, really kind of a cool thing. And, and, and speaking of that, knowing you as well as I do and the types of things that you do, and you have a lot going on and a lot of different things you've taken on what sort of a thought or maybe a tip or an idea you might give to somebody that's kind of housebound that, that doesn't uh, know what to do that doesn't juggle quite as many balls as you do maybe some ideas of things they can do while they're they're stuck in their home yeah well it, it that to me it, you know we talk about mind body spirit right david I, I think that's you know that's a framework of of a human being of the nature of a human and uh, you know, the government has put in place its operational plan to protect the body, so to speak. And so that means, okay, there's an external force telling us what we need to do physically. Now, what can I control? What's within my control? And that's mind and spirit, mm -hmm. right? So what are the things that, one, that people can do to impact in a positive way their mind and spirit? And, and that's why I said I'm committed to growth, because those are things that I can control. I mean, I can control a lot of it, but there's certain things that I can't do, right, because of restrictions. Right. But they're the things that I can control, and that's what I think everybody can do in the morning, is I say, you know, the first thing in the morning, you know, drink those 16 ounces of water, get, get your body flowing correctly. Right. Um, instead of turning on the news right away, or, you know, flipping through Facebook, or whatever you want to do, and getting that content, Figure out what you need to go to that's going to put a positive tone in your brain. Like, how are you going to frame your day? Mm -hmm. That's what people can control. They have full control over that. And, and then it, the world will look different when you start to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Those are great. Those are great tips. And like I say, sometimes they're just people will bring up something. Somebody mentioned the other day that was helpful to me when this first started. I didn't even 
get out of my sweats practically the first couple of days as things were happening. And they said, no, no, get up, take a shower, get cleaned up, shave, you know, put your shoes on, treat it like a regular day. And yeah. so it's been some really good tips. I love that too, about the water too, as well. And, and so when you think about now, we know this is going to end at some point and it's, we don't know when, and we don't know how it's going to be and restarting the country and so forth. But what's a couple of things on Mike Schindler's mind that you're thinking, I'm going to, I'm going to do when this ends to kind of, I got this time to think about it now to maybe hit the ground running, if you will, that, that you might be doing when this does come to an end. Yeah, gosh, that's a great question. I, I you know, I, there has not been a whole lot that has changed for me. Oh, good. David. So that, uh, I mean, sure, you know, economically, you know, we're, we're like everybody else, you know, we're, we're paying you know, close attention to every dollar, et cetera. Um, right. But I think for me, when I look at personal and professional, and that's kind of how I segment it, right? Personally and professionally. Mm -hmm. For me, I'm going to be in, invested more in relationship. Oh, nice. And that, well, I think what I've learned through this is, you know, the, the, the times that I would, you know, go hang with the guys or my wife and I would go to restaurants and hang out, things like that. You know, we have to be more intentional. We have to be more disciplined. We've got to do more, you know, Zoom calls or we've got to, you know, text more, things like that. Right. And I think, you know, for me, I kind of took some of that stuff for granted. And yeah. I'm realizing that because of that separation, uh, I'll probably hug more, to be honest with you. And that might not be popular. <laughs> but, and I'm not a huggy guy. I'm yeah. just not. But I'm like, you know what? I want people to know that they're loved, that they're appreciated. And it, it's okay. And we're one team, it's one dream, it's one fight, we'll get through it. And I need to show people that they have value in my life. And I think I just kind of took that for granted, to be honest with you. Yeah, well said. I think about just as we're on Zoom today and, and FaceTime and all those different elements. In fact, that's another big thing that's a silver lining is all this technology we didn't have 10 or 20 or 30 years ago. And, and I get to look like I'm sitting 10 feet or five feet away from you having a cup of coffee at Starbucks or in the office or something. So it's, it's really cool. So, yeah. so last question, Michael, what would you say is you have sort of a quote or a saying or a mantra or something that kind of represents your philosophy of life that you kind of, you know, use during this time or, you know, there's people that say, well, this too shall pass, but has there been something that kind of guides you that's kind of the overarching philosophy of Mike Schindler? Yeah, hundred percent. And, and I will tell you, uh, when we first went through our experience, so I, I tell people, you know, this necessarily isn't my first rodeo, uh, I think sometimes people forget in, in 2010, 11, and 12, you know, in 2008 and nine, you know, there was the mortgage crisis, right? Right. You know, the big fallout from that. Um, we survived that, but in, in 2010 and 11, people often forget about sequestration. And because we were a government contractor at the time, that was a oh, huge right. hit for us. Right. And we, uh, you know, not only the financial institutions face some challenges through that time, but government contractors, and we lost everything. Wow. And not a whole lot of people know that. Uh, we lost it all. I had 14 bucks in my pocket. Wow. When it was all said and done, lost our house, lost everything. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was tragic. It was pretty traumatic for us. And what I realized through that time was who my true friends were uh, and are, um, what stuff really matters and what doesn't really matter. And that, you know what, I can survive it. Like no crisis has killed me, right? So coming out of that and you know subsequent you know we took that 14 bucks and turned it into over, over millions of dollars two and a half millions you know two and a half million dollars um in a short period of time but wow that growth through that my mantra to this day is still the same when the vision is big the circumstances don't matter mm, and that. that to me to this day i live by that is every day there's new circumstances that emerge, David, that could take me out. Yeah. But my vision for the people I want to serve, for the lives I want to impact, for the difference I want to make is bigger than any crisis. Yeah. And so I just have to keep my mind on the end game. Wow. The vision is bigger than the circumstances. I like that. And that's exactly the type of thing I was looking for to just kind of extend out to people that, again, may not have as wide a reach or don't have as much imagination or whatever you want to call it, that they can learn something from that. But at almost 
and, and as I mentioned, some people have said this too shall pass, but knowing that you can overcome anything, I think you made another point that I really like, and sometimes it has a bit of a negative flavor to it, but you find out who your friends are. You just don't yeah. see this to find out who your friends are when you're at the top and everybody knows Mike Schindler's phone number or my number, but then right. when you're on the bottom and nobody's calling, you know, it's kind of like, wow. Yeah what happened so so that's good yeah. so well thank you so yeah. much those are tremendous tips and uh, the whole reason why i'm doing this i really appreciate it yeah 100 percent, david thank you for having me you bet thanks michael